Welcome to Through the Bible in a Year with Pastor John. We invite you to join us at 1 Oakley Avenue in North Providence, Rhode Island. This podcast is presented to you by The Way Ministries, supported by listeners like you. For donations, live videos, podcasts, and more, please visit www.thewayministriesri.org. Thank you and have a great day. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Through the Bible in a Year with Pastor John. So glad you could join me today to get a portion of God's Word. Today we're going to start a new book, the book of Joel. But before we get started, as always, I want to say congratulations for reading through the book of Hosea with me. It was definitely a short and sweet book with so much to glean from and so much information on God's unconditional love for His people and how He still loves them and always will, and like He loves us unconditionally. All right, I'm going to introduce the book of Joel, and we're going to get started. Like I said before, if you end up falling behind or missing a couple of days, don't beat yourself up. Just understand that God loves you unconditionally. He just honors your faithfulness, not your perfection. He knows our weaknesses, and he knows sometimes life gets in the way. So give yourself a break and just keep on keeping on, and God will honor your faithfulness. All right, Joel, introduction. The locusts have come. Every green thing has been eaten up by the swarm. God's spokesman, Joel, uses this natural disaster to convey a dire warning of a far worse catastrophe. Not locusts, but an army from the north will attack Judah. The only hope of escape in this day of the Lord is to repent. Don't tear your clothing in your grief, but tear your hearts instead. Chapter 2, verse 13. If his people will repent, God will send unparalleled blessing instead of devastating judgment. He will judge the nations that hurt his people and bring peace in his own presence to Zion. Vital Statistics Author Joel Date written During Joel's ministry, either between 835 and 796 B.C. or possibly after 538 B.C. There is uncertainty about the time frame of Joel's ministry. Purpose. To warn people of God's impending judgment unless they turn from their sins. Themes. Punishment. Forgiveness. Promise of the Spirit. Day 250. September 6th. Joel. Chapters 1-3. to Locusts and the Day of the Lord. Overview. Disaster struck the southern kingdom of Judah Without warning, an ominous black cloud, the dreaded locusts, descended upon the land. In a matter of hours, every green living thing had been stripped bare. Joel, God's spokesman during the reign of Joash, 835 to 796 BC, seizes the occasion to proclaim God's message. The locust plague has been a terrible judgment for sin. Yet God's future judgments during the day of the Lord will make that plague pale by comparison. In that day, God will destroy his enemies, but bring unparalleled blessing to those who faithfully obey him. Chapter 1. Devastation of the Locusts. Israel's Present. Chapter 2. Day of the Lord. Israel's Future. Chapter 3. Doom of the Nations. Gentiles future. Insight. A very important day. Joel 1 verse 15. The day of the Lord, chapter 1 verse 15, is mentioned five times in Joel and at least 25 other times in the Bible. For more insight into the meaning of this day, look up Isaiah chapter 2 verse 12, chapter 13 verses 6 to 10, Ezekiel chapter 13 verse 5, Chapter 30, verse 3, Amos, chapter 5, verses 18 to 20, Zephaniah, chapter 1, verse 7, chapter 14, Second Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 2, and Second Peter 3, verses 10 to 14. Insight, Joel in the Old, Peter in the New, Joel, chapter 2, 28 to 32. Peter, preaching on the day of Pentecost, Acts 2, referred to Joel 2, 28-32, to 
to explain to the multitudes the miracle they were witnessing. Although the complete fulfillment of this prophecy had not yet occurred, Joel's message showed that Pentecost was the work of God's Holy Spirit, not of alcoholic spirits. Joel 1 The Lord gave this message to Joel, son of Phethuel, mourning over the locust plague. Hear this, you leaders of the people. Listen, all who live in the land. In all your history, has anything like this happened before? Tell your children about it in the years to come, and let your children tell their children. Pass the story down from generation to generation. After the cutting locusts finished eating the crops, the swarming locusts took what was left. After them came the hopping locusts, and then the stripping locusts, too. Wake up, you drunkards, and weep. Wail, all you wine drinkers. All the grapes are ruined, and all your sweet wine is gone. A vast army of locusts has invaded my land. A terrible army, too numerous to count. Its teeth are like lion's teeth, its fangs like those of a lioness. It has destroyed my grapevines and ruined my fig trees, stripping their bark and destroying it, leaving the branches white and bare. Weep like a bride dressed in black, mourning the death of her husband, for there is no grain or wine to offer at the temple of the Lord. So the priests are in mourning, the ministers of the Lord are weeping. The fields are ruined, the land is stripped bare, the grain is destroyed, the grapes have shriveled, and the olive oil is gone. Despair, all you farmers, wail, all you vine growers, weep, because the wheat and barley, all the crops of the field are ruined, the grapevines have dried up, and the fig trees have withered, the pomegranate trees Palm trees and apple trees, all the fruit trees have dried up, and the people's joy has dried up with them. Dress yourselves in burlap and weep, you priests. Wail, you who serve before the altar. Come, spend the night in burlap, you ministers of my God. For there is no grain or wine to offer at the temple of your God. Announce a time of fasting. Call the people together for a solemn meeting. Bring the leaders and all the people of the land into the temple of the Lord your God and cry out to him there. The day of the Lord is near, the day when destruction comes from the Almighty. How terrible that day will be. Our food disappears before our very eyes. No joyful celebrations are held in the house of our God. The seeds die in the parched ground and the grain crops fail. The barns stand empty, and granaries are abandoned. How the animals moan with hunger. The herds of cattle wander about confused, because they have no pasture. The flocks of sheep and goats bleat in misery. Lord, help us! The fire has consumed the wilderness pastures, and flames have burned up all the trees. Even the wild animals cry out to you, because the streams have dried up and fire has consumed the wilderness pastures. Joel 2 Locusts invade like an army. Sound the trumpets in Jerusalem. Raise the alarm on my holy mountain. Let everyone tremble in fear, because the day of the Lord is upon us. It is a day of darkness and gloom, a day of thick clouds and deep blackness. Suddenly, like dawn spreading across the mountains, a great and mighty army appears. Nothing like it has been seen before or will ever be seen again. Fire burns in front of them and flames follow after them. Ahead of them the land lies as beautiful as the Garden of Eden. Behind them is nothing but desolation. Not one thing escapes. They look like horses. They charge forward like war horses. Look at them as they leap along the mountaintops. Listen to the noise they make like the rumbling of chariots, like the roar of fire sweeping across a field of stubble, or like a mighty army moving into battle. Fear grips all the people. Every face grows pale with terror. The attackers march like warriors and scale city walls like soldiers. 
Straightforward they march, never breaking rank. They never jostle each other. Each moves in exactly the right position. They break through defenses without missing a step. They swarm over the city and run along its walls. They enter all the houses, climbing like thieves through the windows. The earth quakes as they advance, and the heavens tremble. The sun and moon grow dark, and the stars no longer shine. The Lord is at the head of the column. He leads them with a shout. This is his mighty army, and they follow his orders. The day of the Lord is an awesome, terrible thing. Who can possibly survive? A call to repentance. That is why the Lord says, Turn to me now, while there is time. Give me your hearts. Come with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Don't tear your clothing in your grief, but tear your hearts instead. Return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love. He is eager to relent and not punish. Who knows? Perhaps he will give you a reprieve, sending you a blessing instead of this curse. Perhaps you will be able to offer grain and wine to the Lord your God as before. Blow the ram's horn in Jerusalem. Announce a time of fasting. Call the people together for a solemn meeting. Gather all the people, the elders, the children, and even the babies. Call the bridegroom from his quarters and the bride from her private room. Let the priests who minister in the Lord's presence stand and weep between the entry room to the temple and the altar. Let them pray. Spare your people, Lord. Don't let your special possession become an object of mockery. Don't let them become a joke for unbelieving foreigners who say, Has the God of Israel left them? The Lord's promise of restoration. Then the Lord will pity his people and jealously guard the honor of his land. The Lord will reply, Look, I am sending you grain and new wine and olive oil, enough to satisfy your needs. You will no longer be an object of mockery among the surrounding nations. I will drive away these armies from the north. I will send them into the parched wastelands. Those in front will be driven into the Dead Sea and those at the rear into the Mediterranean. The stench of their rotting bodies will rise over the land. Surely the Lord has done great things. Don't be afraid, O land. Be glad now and rejoice, for the Lord has done great things. Don't be afraid, you animals of the field, for the wilderness pastures will soon be green. The trees will again be filled with fruit. Fig trees and grapevines will be loaded down once more. Rejoice, you people of Jerusalem. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for the rain he sends demonstrates his faithfulness. Once more, the autumn rains will come, as well as the rains of spring. The threshing floors will again be piled high with grain, and the presses will overflow with new wine and olive oil. The Lord says, I will give you back what you lost to the swarming locusts, the hopping locusts, the stripping locusts, and the cutting locusts. It was I who sent this great destroying army against you. Once again, you will have all the food you want, and you will praise the Lord your God who does these miracles for you. Never again will my people be disgraced. Then you will know that I am among my people Israel, that I am the Lord your God, and there is no other. Never again will my people be disgraced, the Lord's promise of his spirit. Then, after doing all those things, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your old men will dream dreams, and your young men will see visions. In those days I will pour out my spirit, even on servants, men and women alike, and I will cause wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun will become dark, and the moon will turn blood red, 
before that great and terrible day of the Lord arrives. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For some on Mount Zion and Jerusalem will escape, just as the Lord has said. These will be among the survivors whom the Lord has called. Joel 3. Judgment against enemy nations. At the time of those events, says the Lord, when I restore the prosperity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will gather the armies of the world into the valley of Jehoshaphat. There I will judge them for harming my people, my special possession, for scattering my people among the nations, and for dividing up my land. They threw dice to decide which of my people would be their slaves. They traded boys to obtain prostitutes and sold girls for enough wine to get drunk. What do you have against me, Tyre and Sidon, and you cities of Philistia? Are you trying to take revenge on me? If you are, then watch out. I will strike swiftly and pay you back for everything you have done. You have taken my silver and gold and all my precious treasures and have carried them off to your pagan temples. You have sold the people of Judah and Jerusalem to the Greeks so they could take them far from their homeland. But I will bring them back from all the places to which you sold them and I will pay you back. For everything you have done, I will sell your sons and daughters to the people of Judah, and they will sell them to the people of Arabia, a nation far away. I, the Lord, have spoken. Say to the nations far and wide, get ready for war. Call out your best warriors. Let all your fighting men advance for the attack. Hammer your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Train even your weaklings to be warriors. Come quickly, all you nations everywhere. Gather together in the valley. And now, O Lord, call out your warriors. Let the nations be called to arms. Let them march to the valley of Jehoshaphat. There I, the Lord, will sit to pronounce judgment on them all. Swing the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come tread the grapes. For the wine press is full. The storage vats are overflowing with the wickedness of these people. Thousands upon thousands are waiting in the valley of decision. There the day of the Lord will soon arrive. The sun and moon will grow dark. And the stars will no longer shine. The Lord's voice will roar from Zion and thunder from Jerusalem. And the heavens and the earth will shake. But the Lord will be a refuge for his people, a strong fortress for the people of Israel. Blessings for God's people. Then you will know that I, the Lord your God, live in Zion, my holy mountain. Jerusalem will be holy forever, and foreign armies will never conquer her again. In that day the mountains will drip with sweet wine, and the hills will flow with milk. Water will fill the stream beds of Judah, and a fountain will burst forth from the Lord's temple, watering the arid valley of Achaeus. But Egypt will become a wasteland, and Edom will become a wilderness, because they attacked the people of Judah and killed innocent people in their land. But Judah will be filled with people forever, and Jerusalem will endure through all generations. I will pardon my people's crimes, which they have not yet pardoned, and I, the Lord, will make my home in Jerusalem with my people. My Daily Walk After reading Joel's short three-chapter book, try to summarize its description of God in a single word. The book of Joel reads like the screenplay from a disaster movie, locust swarms, drought, famine, raging bushfires, invading armies, astronomical catastrophes. But why this display of calamitous events? One reason becomes apparent at the end of the book, then you will know that I, the Lord your God, live in Zion. 317. You cannot read Joel without coming to grips with the Almighty God who sovereignly controls the course of history. Not only is God big enough to move mountains, but he is also concerned enough to be a welcoming refuge 
and a strong fortress. 316. That means he is your refuge, your stronghold, your fortress. All good words to choose for your one word summary. Pick up a small rock and carry it with you today. Let it remind you that your fortress is big enough to rule this mighty universe, yet small enough to live within your heart. The judgment of God shall turn topsy turvy the judgments of people. That is so true. That's all for today, my brothers and sisters. It was great reading along with you. Have a great day. Keep up the good work. And God bless. And I will see you tomorrow. Lord willing. Peace.